So good morning, students. And this is going to be your last class in view of your examinations that are due. So I decided to, uh, you know, just introduce you and also teach you uh, like, uh, chapter seven as well as chapter eight. Just mute your mic, please. Thank you. Okay, so I decided to teach chapter seven and chapter eight just in one class or well, technically speaking, it's going to be two hours from now, but we'll have breaks in between that is just maybe five or 10 minutes break in between, between this, uh, between uh, probably after lecturing chapter seven, chapter eight, then we'll take a break and then we will come back for, uh, you know, our discussion examination point of view. And we're going to discuss important questions that are going to come for your exams and um, how you have to prepare for it. And I'm going to give you some tips, examination point of view. So for today, um, you just have organizational accountability in social service. And apart from that, if you can see in your chat message, I have just enumerated all the chapters there. So we have completed thus far chapter one, introduction, leadership and models, that is types. Chapter two, professional turfs in social service and human service organizations. Then we finish chapter three, self-leadership and distributor leadership in social service sector. Then we moved on to chapter four, social work management and the role of social work manager. Then chapter five, leadership and direct social work practice. Chapter six, board of directors in social service organization. And that's what we dealt with during the last class. Now chapter seven that we're going to do today, organizational accountability in social service. And chapter eight, the future of social service uh, and I remember I've given you assignment on this topic as well, the future of social service. So today, again, I'm reiterating, we are going to discuss two topics, organizational accountability in the social service sector and the future of social service. Now, what means accountability? What means accountability? If someone says, I will hold you accountable, or you're working somewhere, and someone says that, uh, for example, um, okay, Mr. Mohammed, you are accountable for this job, or you are accountable for XYZ task. So what does it mean? Accountability is nothing but a kind of a responsibility that is thrust upon you. Okay, now here I've used the word Mohammed. So one of you, Mr. Mohammed. So there is a task or an assignment that is given to you or a task that is assigned to you. And they ask you to complete the task whether individually or along with your team. That means you are responsible for the task and you would see that the task is completed within the parameters or within the particular bounds in which it has to be completed. So basically, accountability is an assurance that you would be giving Mr. Mohammed as an individual or Suppose you're dealing with, you know, on behalf of your organization with someone else or in, on behalf of your office with someone else. So you're kind of giving that assurance on behalf of your organization that you are going to do the assigned task or whatever assignment it is perfectly or appropriately in the manner that it is required to be performed. Are you understanding me? So basically, it is about responsibility that is thrust upon you or given to you. 
and you're giving the assurance or in you know just simple terms like you are promising them that well i'm going to do my task well you can count on me and it's going to be within parameters it's going to be within what is discussed it is going to be within the law it is going to be within uh, whatever it is within the mission vision of the organization or the charter of the organization so normally it's going to be you know carried out in an appropriate manner are you understanding me so i'd like to reiterate again the concept in a more structured form now so therefore accountability refers to a responsibility that is thrust upon a person it is you could call it as an assurance that an individual or an individual on behalf of the organization will be normally evaluated on the performance of that particular task or probably even behavior related to whatever task it is or related to something so this is accountability okay so I gave you the example of Muhammad. So Muhammad is going to be accountable for whatever task it is. And it is his responsibility, God forbid, if the task does not go well, and they would say, you have not done it well, so you will be held accountable. For example, in case it costs the organization, they would also say that, okay, Muhammad, you have, you know, you have not performed it well, and it has caused a loss to the company to the extent of, you know, so-and-so dollars. So we are going to cut it from your salary, example. Or uh, suppose uh, yet another example I could give you is normally there is confidentiality that has to be maintained when you join any organization, just for your knowledge, uh, some of you may be already working, well, I'm not aware about what you do exactly, but I understand that some of you may be working. So when you sign an employment agreement or when even when you discuss employment terms, uh, I'm sure the employer will say or whoever is representing the employer, the HR department, whoever is your boss. So they would say that, well, you are to hold certain matters confidential. That means it has to be within the walls of the organization. Your job is a job of, you know, you know, of responsibility, and you're not supposed to discuss the matters of the organization with a third party, especially competitors, uh, with respect to the, you know, the department that you're handling or with respect to the tasks that you're assigned. For example, uh, a finance manager would, you know, kind of maintain absolute secrecy about the total uh, you know, turnover of the company. You know, unless it is, you know, it is required to be published in the company manuals at the right time. After, you know, uh, the higher ups or the stakeholders or the board of directors approve for the publishing of, uh, you know, the, the total turnover of the company. So this uh, what we are discussing right now is just to set the perspective and just to make you understand what is accountability. Are you understanding me? So I was talking about employees' accountability. So the com I, I will give you an example of you know confidentiality clause uh, or you know the term confidentiality term in an employment agreement. When there is confidentiality term, it has to be you know complied with, and the employee is not expected to divulge or to to release certain information pertaining to the organization with any third party or with any other organization or with anyone else for that matter. Apart from that, there are different, you know, matters that may need, may, you know, may need to be held confidential. For example, the legal department. And uh, I'm from the legal department, so I know what it is. So you maintain a lot of things confidential on behalf of the company. There are all, you know, certain um, most, you know, most sensitive matters that come to you. And even though you're friends with other departments, but still you're not supposed to, you know, certain, you know, matters, you're not supposed to discuss even with your friends around you. I mean, that depends. Confidentiality depends upon the job that you do and what type of, it, you know, you know, department it is, what type of job it is. So by and large, confidentiality clause is again, you know, a clause that is 
no, or normally should find its place in an employment agreement and an employee, depending upon what is the position designation, what is the role the employee is playing, is not supposed to release any confidential information of the company to any other third party, especially sensitive information or trade related information. Any information that is, uh, you know, there are certain trade secrets, like for example, tender related or project related or finance related or litigation related or, you know, debt related, D-E-B-T, debt related. That is the company, if it owes money to some other organization or banks or financial institutions or government, so certain or where the company has not paid its bills on time or there are certain, you know, um, conflicts with some other companies. So certain matters are confidential. And in case the employee ends up releasing certain information and the employer gets to know that would amount to termination of the employment contract, that means the employee would be sacked. That means they would say, okay, go back just pack up and go back home. Well, so that means they're going to terminate the agreement. And again, it depends upon what type of information the person has divulged or how hard it has hit the company. So depending on that, again, it may lead to you know having legal consequences and depending upon uh, what has been really divulged or what has been really you know released, out whatever confidential information has been released, it can you know lead to probably even a criminal case or just a civil case, or uh, maybe you know they would probably just only sack the person off. Like I, I, I being from the legal field, I've come across a lot of cases. I mean, I I don't even know the number of cases, so innumerable cases not just within the organization, but I mean, I'm just talking in my career thus far, there were so many people who are who were really removed out of their jobs for certain reasons where they, they, you know, thwarted or they, they, you know, did not comply with the confidentiality clause, and it really costed the company. Like, for example, there was a person who released some tender related information and gave it to the competitor and these days we are all you know equipped with information technology and everything is you know the systems are up to up to the mark and it is also strong at the moment so but they trace the person how the person handled the computer the office computer and these days are the days of cameras so when the person entered the office when the person exited the office what the person was doing beyond working hours and how the person uh, got hold of that information, though it is within his the, you know, work or the purview of his work, it was his task, but how he released, what were the emails that went out of his desktop and also the emails that went out of his laptop. Because even if you use your laptop at home, uh, I'm sure you know that companies have a way of tracking the laptop. So how the information went out, to whom it went out, and he was actually turned over to the police. And here it's a criminal offense when you divulge any, you know, tender related information, which would cost the company and the person had to go behind bars. And of course, a heavy penalty was imposed. So, well, because he was holding a, a you know, a kind of, um, you know, responsible position, and he was not expected to do that, whatever may be the cause, even though he was on a notice period, that is, his employment was anyway going to be terminated, but yet you are held responsible for divulging any confidential information. You will be held accountable for releasing any confidential information about the company. If the company has asked you or contracted with you not to release any sensitive or trade secret related or business related or whatever related information and confidentiality clause for your knowledge uh, it would you know be effective even after the 
you know, the employment contract is terminated, even if you join some other organization. So, you know, it depends upon how the confidentiality clause is drafted. It could be, they would say that, you know, the con this clause would be active for two years after the termination of this agreement. That means for two years, within the span of two years, you're not expected to speak up anything about the company whatever you are handling or sometimes they would say five years or sometimes it's indefinite so that means if certain matters are really so you know crucial or something that is highly significant to that company so you're not supposed to really you know release it at all but fairly speaking normally they will just keep it to two or three years well so that is a Accountability. I'm sure you might have got a fair grasp over the concept of accountability. Reiterating again, it is something related to responsibility and it is an assurance that is given by an individual or an individual on behalf of the organization or an organization. And when they say that they are willing to be evaluated on their performance or behavior related to something that they are assigned or something that they are responsible for. Now, Accountability, that means it has to be effective. The task performance has to be effective. And it is, of course, not just confined to one individual in the organization. It is, of course, the entire organization has to be, you know, accountable for whatever they do. So apart from that, now the question is, what is organizational accountability? What it is? So now you understood what is accountability. Now we'll see what is organizational accountability just to set the perspective and then we'll go to the, you know, for you to understand and then we'll go to the main concept of organizational accountability in social service and we'll, you know, come down to that concept. Now, what is organizational accountability? Now, organizational accountability, now you understood what's accountability. Obviously, organizational accountability is about how the organization is, you know, accountable uh, you know, as a whole, where, you know, it is expected to perform or, you know, operate within the company's charter or the mission or the vision or the values or goals that are set within the organization. It is about every individual who's part of the organization. It is about holding the employees, you know, accountable. It is about holding them you know, the higher ups or the you know the mid level management that is the managers departmental heads or the managers accountable or executives accountable depending upon however is the organization structure of the of the company and then who is responsible for accomplishing certain goals or you know completing certain tasks or making decisions basically that really needs to be delivered or you know, has to be performed within certain parameters. So that is organizational accountability. So how would you identify this organizational accountability or, um, you know, how would you really, uh, uh, you know, yeah, how would you identify that, yes, the person is, you know, reflecting in his or her service that the person is accountable. So that person would really not, you know, reveal anything much about the job and whenever the, the person commits mistake or you know commits any error so the person will really you know say i'm sorry i mean they would recognize their own mistakes and openly discuss it with their boss and say yes i i, I really committed this mistake and you know it has happened and so normally accountability also is related to how the person owns up to the mistake or recognizes the faults when they're not able to deliver within parameters. Now, we are not talking about confidentiality clause here. We are just talking about general accountability, where the job has to be performed well. If the job is not performed well, so we would say that you are accountable for that. So like, uh, you know, uh, they would say that, yes, what are your faults? Why didn't you perform well? So you recognize your own mistakes and say, yeah, it's my bad. Yeah, fine. I have committed the mistake and I understand where the errors are. I'm going to rectify. And I see that I'm not going to commit this, uh, you know, this um, error again. So then you set goals for yourself. So this is how you increase the accountability. You would recognize your mistake and, you know, you would own it up to your higher up or to the one you report to. Then you set 
goals for yourself that yes, I'm going to work in such and such a manner and you make expectations clear and you also, you know, kind of keep everything transparent or, you know, you keep communication very clear and transparent. So thereby, again, you know, you would say that, well, uh, if anyone asks any questions, so I have relevant answers with me and uh, I worked within parameters. So in simple, you know, language, I've explained to you what is organization accountability and how employees are accountable or how organization is accountable as a whole and so on. Now, why are we talking about accountability? Why? Why are we talking about this? We are talking about organization accountability because that's going to lead to, uh, you know, fortifying or strengthening the working of the organization. It fortifies. What it does, it fortifies. It fortifies the, the, the work that is being performed by the organization. It makes the organization or an individual, whoever, whatever, depending upon what's the perspective there, it makes them more responsible. It, you know, it reduces conflicts or you know, disputes, of course, when conflicts are not addressed. So it you know, builds into a dispute. When it becomes a dispute, it is at that moment when it is, you know, it is filed in the courts. So at the first level, it is in, you know, at the stage of conflict. So it reduces conflicts, it reduces friction, then it improves performance it helps one to measure performance of the organization. And it naturally, then it inspires confidence, it builds trust. And of course, it helps one to validate thoughts and ideas and so on. So having the set, set the perspective, now that you understand, I believe that organizational accountability, uh, you've understood accountability and organizational accountability. Now let's move on to see or learn about organizational accountability with respect to social service sector. And likewise, like the corporate sector or like companies in the normal business world, even social service organizations are bound by this concept of organizational accountability and they're accountable. In case we get disconnected, please join back. So they are accountable. Just think about it this way. Why not? Even before we, you know, I just move forward with the slides, I just want you to think about this. I'm sure you know that social service sector or just forget about the sector, any social service organization or charitable organization, of course, you're aware that they receive funds. They could, it could be government funding or stakeholders funding, or it could be private funding, whatever. So when they receive funds, that means they're accountable for the proper, uh, you know, allocation of funds for the appropriate purpose, you know, within the, like, it has to be within the parameters of the charter of the organization or the charitable organization. So that means they are held responsible. There has to be no misappropriation of funds. Are you understanding me? So there should be no misappropriation of funds. Funds should be used for the purpose for which it has been raised and so on. So the organization will be held accountable. So this is one example of, you know, how social service organizations are normally held accountable. Normally it is in terms of finance or grants that are disbursed to them or released to them and how they are allocated, whether at all they are allocated appropriately uh, by the you know the the management of the social service organization so let's move on to see what what it is in our slides okay so at the outset let us understand the concept of accountability that I already explained to you. Accountability in general implies being responsible for the outcomes of a particular activity upon review and evaluation of that activity. Accountability, that means the person or the organization subjects himself, herself, or themselves, or itself when it comes to organization to 
evaluation and review. What is evaluation review? Just to check whether, okay, I'm open to evaluation. I'm open to review. I'm accountable. Anytime you can check upon me and see whether I've, I'm working well and I'm working within parameters. Uh, and in the social service organization perspective that yes, you can check our records, you can check our accounts, everything is transparent and clear. And whatever funds have been you know, uh, allocated to us, it has been appropriately utilized or whatever funds have been disbursed, it has been appropriately allocated and appropriately utilized for a specific purpose, whatever purpose it has been dispersed. So accountability, therefore, in general, implies being responsible for the outcomes of a particular activity upon review and evaluation of that activity. Now, the Cambridge Dictionary gives you, you know, a simple explanation or the definition of what is accountability. Whenever any question comes for the exam, not just about accountability, about any question for that matter. I want you to begin the answer with a definition. If there is you know, a need to define any particular term there, and if it's a concept that you're normally dealing with in a particular question. So talking about accountability, the Cambridge Dictionary defines accountability as the fact of being responsible for what you do and able to give a satisfactory reason for it or the degree to which this happens. Now, in an Investopedia article, which was available online, accountability is defined as an acceptance of responsibility for honest and ethical conduct towards others. In the corporate world, a company's accountability extends to its shareholders, employees, and the wider community in which it operates. So in a wider sense, accountability implies a willingness to be judged on performance or the willingness. Now, if, 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 it, if it is a definition according to someone, you and it has to be within quotes. You can see this here. It has to be within quotes, okay? You cannot add your own words. So if you're putting it in inverted commas, that means you will have to just state the definition as it is. Are you understanding me? But if you're just giving the general meaning, you, uh, you're not expected, or in fact, you should not be putting inverted commas. So what Investopedia is trying to define accountability as, you know, in the last sentence here that you can see on the slide, the saying that it implies a willingness to be judged on performance or they you know they're willing to subject themselves to evaluation of their performance so that is accountability they say next is thereby accountability is an ethic based mechanism ethics based mechanism sworn by every sphere in the modern era the corporate as well as the you know the philanthropic as well or even the social or the human service sector so it's not just confined to the corporate world it's also you know for the philanthropic sector or the social service sector or even the human service sector now the social service sector is a precursor of social development we all know that in the sense so the social service sector is highly responsible for social development and it is in fact the foundation of social development it it has a big hand in the development of the society or the infrastructure or whatever social causes may be there so that is a precursor of social overall social development and thus it attracts the need for regulated standards of excellence and accountability regulated it needs to be regulated the social service sector needs to be regulated how it is regulated by regulations rules laws so it is regulated it's regulated in the sense that it has to work within certain uh, you know legal framework or there are certain you know legitimate framework that is uh, devised within which it has to work there are rules within which it has to work the government lays down certain rules or there is a law for that so it it is a regulated sector. Now, accountability and transparency are the two pillars of social sector regulation. Next is Ocampo is said to have remarked once that civil society organizations are expected to contribute to transparency and accountability, which are key principles underlying good governance. 
So they are usually demanded, of course, from public officials and government institutions as mechanisms that protect, preserve, and sustain public trust in the processes that government carries out for the people. So what is accountability or campus says? He says it's a mechanism that protects, preserves, and sustains public trust. So you could also say that you know, accountability is a mechanism that protects, preserves, and sustains trust in the process that the organization carries out. So Ocampo is talking about, you know, government organization, or he is normally he's talking about in the social service, uh, you know, perspective, that is government uh, social service organization, you know. So he's talking about how the government institutions, you know, they have to cling to the concept of accountability so because accountability acts as a mechanism that protects preserves and sustains public trust the trust of the society in the processes that government carries out for its people so thus accountability can be at different levels social accountability of an individual of a company or of a social service organization as well. So it could mean personal accountability or organizational accountability. But personal accountability, I've already discussed earlier, uh, could also include accountability as a member of the society or member of social service organization or social service worker, or simply as an individual to our society. Accountability is distinct or it differs from responsibility. Now, what we are trying to say that, that it is not same as responsibility, but it accountability includes responsibility. It is, it is related to responsibility. However, in its concept itself, it's different from responsibility, the definition of responsibility. So what is responsibility as a whole? Responsibility pertains to the task assigned to its completion of the task in an appropriate manner. Okay. Now, accountability pertains to how the responsibility is carried out, how the job is done, and the completion of the assigned task within specified bounds. I'm repeating. Accountability and responsibility are related. They are brothers. But of course, they are brothers, but still they, it is two different concepts. Let us put it this way. They are brothers, but they are two different concepts. They're related, 